welcome back. And so in this video, we're going to start to implement the user interface, okay? And it's through the user interface that we'll be able to select an action, okay? So let's go into the storyboard, okay? And we're first just going to create three buttons. So, so select the utilities icon, okay? And in the bottom right hand corner, just type in button, okay? So B U T T O N, okay? And then drag and then drag a button onto the view controller, okay? And let's just stretch out this button. Let's make it about, let's make it 70 by 30, okay? So 70 pixels by 30 pixels, okay? And then let's click on this icon right here to add a few constraints. And we're just going to add two constraints, so to the width and height, okay? And then click on add two constraints. Great. So now that we have done this, we're just going to duplicate the button three times. So click on click copy and paste, okay? And do this three times, or do this two times, okay? And once you've done this, Let's select all three buttons, okay? So hold down shift and then select all the buttons, okay? And let's embed the buttons in a stack view, okay? And a stack view will automatically apply constraints to the buttons for us, okay? So select this icon right here, which says embed in stack, okay? And so now that we have the stack view, let's add a few constraints to the stack view, okay? So making sure that it's selected, okay, click on this icon right here, which is the align icon, and then click the checkbox which says horizontally in container, okay, then click on one constraint, okay, and the other constraint we're going to add is a constraint to the bottom, okay, so select the add new constraints icon, okay, and then change the value from what it is, okay, and change it to 25. Okay, or leave it if it's currently in 25, okay? And then click on add one constraint. Great, this is good. So now that we have done this, let's again make sure that we have the stack view selected and let's increase the spacing, okay? So the spacing is currently a zero. What we're going to do is to change it to a 12, okay? So we now have a spacing between the buttons, okay? So now that we have done this, Let's change the text in the individual buttons, okay? So select the first button, okay? And this is going to be the button for the sideways action, okay? So remove the text which says button, okay? And let's add the less than operator, then the score character, okay? And then the greater than operator, okay? So there we go. And let's also increase the font size from a 15 to a 17. Okay, and then once we've done that, let's change the default color from a blue, okay, to snow. So click on snow right here, okay, which is much better. And so now that we've done this for the first button, let's do this for the other two. Okay, so select the center button, let's change the text from a button to a stop. Okay, let's increase the font size from a 15 to a 17, okay, and again, let's change the color from a blue to snow, so just select snow, okay, and then finally, let's do the third button, okay, and so this button is for the round action, okay, so select it, okay, change the text from button, again, we're going to use the less than operator, and then the not operator, and then the greater than operator, okay? And again, let's increase the font size from a 15 to a 17, okay? And once we've done this, let's finally change the default color from a blue to a snow, okay? Tab, tab, enter, okay, and so there we go. So now that we have created the three buttons, let's connect the buttons to the script, okay? And so to do this, we're going to select this icon right here, okay? And this is the assistant editor icon, and it enables a split screen. So let's scroll down to the bottom, okay? And let's now connect the buttons. So what we're going to do is this. 
we're going to select the first button, which is the round action button, right click, and then drag it onto the scene or drag it onto the script. Okay. We're going to change the connection type from an outlet to an action. Okay. And we're going to call this button start round action. Okay. And then we'll click on connect. Okay. And we're going to do the same for the remaining two buttons. Okay. So select the stop button. Okay. Right click, drag it. Okay. And when presented with the pop up, change the connection from an outlet to an action. Okay. And let's just call this button stop all actions. Okay. And then we'll click on connect. Great. And so we're now going to do this for the horizontal action button. So select the horizontal action button, right click, drag it onto the scene, and in the pop up, we're going to change the out, we're going to change the connection from an outlet to an action, and we're going to call it horizontal action. Okay, or oh, forgive me, start horizontal action. Okay, so start horizontal action. Click on connect. Great. Okay. And so now that we have the three actions, let's write the code to implement them. Okay. So click on this icon right here, which is for the standard editor. Okay. And then go back onto the view controller. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do is to conduct a method call. So we could write hmm, round action. Okay. But for round action, we need to pass in a value. Okay. So we need to pass in, we need to pass in an argument. Okay. And the argument has to be a node, but you know, it's not possible to pass the backboard node or it's not possible to access the backboard node from out of the add backboard function. Okay. And the reason for this is because the scope of the backboard node is only in between these two curly braces. Okay. And so what we need, we need a global variable, okay? And a global variable is a variable in which we'll be able to access anywhere in the script, okay? So from the bottom all the way to up here, okay? And so to create this global variable, what we're going to type is this. We're going to type in var, okay, current node, okay, which is of type scn node, okay? And remember to include the exclamation mark. Okay. And so what we're going to do now is this. When we add the backboard, we're going to set the backboard to the current node. Okay. And so because of this, we will always have access to the backboard node. Okay. And so that way, we'll be able to call the round action with the value backboard node. Okay. So what we're going to do, well, let's first remove this action. Okay. And what we're going to write now is this. We're going to write current node equals backboard node. Okay. And so now let's go down to the bottom and let's conduct the function call. So for round action, we're now going to pass in the value current node. Okay. Which is great. And then for start horizontal action, we're going to conduct the method call and we're going to write horizontal action. Okay. And again, we're going to pass in the value current node. Okay. Now, for the stop all actions button, what we're going to write is this. We're going to write current node. Okay. Dot remove all actions. Okay. And so what's going to happen now is this. When this button is selected, all the actions are going to be removed. Okay, so let's just run the code and let's test it. Okay, so right now we have the hoop or we have the backboard. Let's select the round action button <laughs> and it works. Oh, great. This is great. Let's try to shoot. Oh, close. Oh, yes. <laughs> we got it in. <laughs> okay, let's stop the action. Great. Let's start the. Let's start the horizontal action. Okay, let's try to shoot. Oh, not quite. Yes. Okay, let's stop it. Great. 
okay and so it works and this is really good okay and so this is going to be for this video and so I'll see you all in the next video thank you